Okay, guys and gals, good morning. So, it is pretty early in the morning, and it's Father's Day. So I just like to tell all the fathers out there, happy Father's Day. You know, one person that I admire in this walk in life is a dedicated family man. So to all the fathers out there, happy Father's Day. So for this video, what we're going to do is we're going to set our resize die into position one of our Dillon 650. What we're going to do is we're going to set it up utilizing only one function. In the last video, we saw that this die serves for three different purposes. But the only thing we want to use from this die is the expander ball. The reason is, is well, you're going to have to follow along. But for this video, the only thing we're setting this up for is for a new case. And remember, we changed our terminology on that on the last video. We're setting this up for a case that is already set to a SAMI minimum chamber. And in a moment, I'm going to show you what a SAMI minimum chamber is. Now, once we come back from the range, and our cartridge case is now larger than a SAMI minimum chamber, then we will utilize all three functions of this die. So, let's start off with learning what a SAMI minimum chamber is, because if you set this resize die up wrong in your machine and you size to where your case is a thousandths or two longer than it needs to be there's a chance that it will not go into full battery now I want you to think about something if this is a resize die and I just said your case could be longer then that means there's something we could do to this to actually make our case a little bit longer and we don't want to do that so so what I have to help illustrate what a SAMI minimum chamber is is this is the Reading Instant Indicator this is a a headspace and bullet comparator alright and what this is is this is the setup gauge for 223 Remington and what this is, is it is machined to a SAMI minimum chamber. So when I zero this gauge, my dial indicator to the setup gauge, and I run my setup gauge to top dead center, we can see that I'm real close. Sorry guys. To being zero. So now that is a SAMI minimum chamber. Now I want to say this, uh, and guys, I, I'm not a, uh, I don't design guns, I'm not an engineer, I'm not a machinist, but what this is basically is for the 223 Remington, all chambers can be this small with a tolerance of 10 thousandths. So in, in other words, nobody in a perfect world, a perfect world, if they're all produced to SAMI specs, nobody's chamber is going to be any smaller than that, but you could get a chamber that's 10 thousandths larger. As an example, for my AR-15, my cases come out roughly six to six and a half thousandths larger than SAMI minimum. All right. Some chambers are tight. They may, might be two or three thousandths. You see what I'm saying? So this is our SAMI min. Sammy Min Chamber. Now, to help us understand the rest of what you're about to see, let's take this setup gauge and let's see what every position that this shell plate has looks like on this instant indicator. Perfect. Perfect.
not quite a thousandths high. Perfect. The reason I did that is on a single stage press where the ram is coming up off the center. When you run that setup gauge repeatedly up and down, it will always be centered. But one of the one of the challenges with a, a progressive press is when you have your positions placed further out away from that center ram, now you have five different spots on that shell plate and the question is is just how close are they and as you can see four out of five of these of this Dillon are freaking flat on and one is just barely over a thousandths high so not too bad but the reason we have to understand this is we're going to be running measurements off of this and if we see one of them that's a little off we can automatically add into the equation it is probably that one position okay so with all things being equal there we go so if I told you I had a new cartridge it was to uh, a SAMI minimum chamber what would that new cartridge look like in this reading instant indicator well there is our cartridge case from the brass guys and we could call that new. I mean it's not. It's been once fired but they've they've resized it back down to a SAMI minimum chamber. They've, they've swaged it. They've, they've done everything to that. So it has been previously fired but it's it's to what? SAMI min. So what would it look like? There we go. Now uh, your cases aren't always going to be the same. So I could begin taking cases just randomly and as you see there's going to be a little bit of a fluctuation and that's okay all right so now what we want to do is we want to talk about obturation while I begin threading this die into place obturation when the case is in the chamber and you pull the trigger, the primer ignites the powder, the pressure begins increase, increasing evenly to all outer diameters. So your cartridge case is going to expand much like a balloon. And it's going to expand to all outer diameters. And what's going to stop it from going any further is the inner walls of your chamber. So we have obturation, okay? Well, would it be fair to say that if we have obturation in our chamber and our case has increased to all outer diameters, wouldn't it be correct to say that we have to size this case down now to all outer diameters? So now I want you to think about something. Is there a chance that if we took one of these new cases and we began running it up into our resized die, do you think there's a chance that the body of this die could begin squeezing in and just like a tube of toothpaste, we could make this grow? Now think about that. If this is set to Sammy Min, but we run it up there and we lengthen the case without knowing, there's a chance it's not going to cycle into your the chamber of your rifle. All right. So now I want to I want to talk about why it is that we're only utilizing the expander ball. There's two reasons. The first reason is if I can find it here, guys. Here we go. I set these out here last night. The first reason is we want to take that expander ball and begin truing the mouth and the necks of our cartridge cases up. Do you see how this cartridge case, the mouth, is out around? If you were to seat a bullet into that, 
there's a very good chance that you're going to shave the jacket and now all accuracy is right out the window. So that's the first thing we need to address. But the other thing that we're going to do, remember when we had this resized die apart in the last video and we look at, took a look at the expander ball that goes in and out and sizes the mouth of this case? Well, just like no case is created equal, no expander ball is created equal. There's always going to be a slight difference. Well, you want to initially set your cases up to your expander ball so load after load after load the neck of this case is always the same because think about this your neck is what puts the tension on your bullet it's that tension that enables the pressures to increase where you need them so you always want that internal case pressure to be consistent but if we load this without resizing the mouth of this case, aren't we going to have a different pressure than when we come back and then we resize it with this expander ball? So this step is going to provide us with getting the mouth of the case perfectly round and we're going to set neck tension on this from our expander ball so after we fire it we come back we have the same neck tension from load to load to load from round to round to round. I hope that makes sense. So now what we're going to do is on our resize die what I've done is I have threaded it in to where I'm just making contact with that shell plate and no more. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a cartridge case place it into position 4 and let's make our verification of where we're at so it's about uh, you know a half a thousandth low for my illustration for us to really see what's going to happen with this cartridge case let's zero it just as close as we can get that so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lube this case don't forget to lube your case guys I'm going to place it into the case feed tube. I'm going to bring the cam slide back. I've got my case. Place it into position one of the shell plate. I'm going to come up. I'm going to run it right into the size die. I'm going to see what happened with this case. I just lengthened that case that is over a thousandths. Even if we're sitting in the spot on that shell plate where it had almost a thousandths, this is more than a thousandths. So what just happened with our case? What happened was is when this case went into this die, the outer walls of the case came in contact with the inner walls of the body of the die but our neck, our shoulder never came in contact with the shoulder bump of the die and your case just grew. So in attempting to uniform your neck tension you just increase the length of that case. If you have a tight chamber okay, and you need four thousandths or three thousandths uh, tolerance on that case, well there's a chance that this case isn't going to chamber into your rifle. You might load a hundred of these up and you know how many of those aren't going to feed for you. And depending on the die and the case, let's just see. I'll back this out just a little more. But depending on, you know, some cases have thicker walls than other and not all dies are the same. Sometimes you can run a different case up into there and it will be worse. You might see another thousandths or two thousandths onto that. So it can really catch you off guard. So now we need to do something so we can, we can uniform the neck of this case but we don't affect our Sammy Min chamber. 
So this is how you're going to set this die up. You're going to go ahead and run it down. Okay, I'm going to walk it back. You're going to run it down until you just touch the bottom of that shell plate or the top of your shell plate. Now you're going to take this die and you are going to begin turning it out one complete turn. All right, on a reloading die. This is a 1 and 7 eighths by 14 thread. That means for every one inch of thread, or for every one inch, I have 14 threads. So if I back this off one turn, I have just given, given myself 74 thousandths clearance. That means I have a 0.074 inches clearance. What that would mean is, let me grab my case here, guys. I'm going to grab another case and I'll get it looped up. Um, this is what that means. With that die positioned one turn up, I can enter into it. You see how it's smooth? I won't touch the outer diameter of that case with the inner diameter of the die body, but I will successfully run the expander ball through the neck of the case. There you go. So let me do another case and let's go ahead and pre-check pre it on our indicator. So. So that case there, it's just uh, slightly uh, about a half a thousandth or so under Sammy Min. I'll go ahead and I'll put a little case loop on that. I'll, I'll grab it, place it into position one, run it into the resize. There you go. It's just still slightly under Sammy Min, and that is acceptable. And so now you understand that what you're trying to do with a case that's new, it's never been fired, or it's a case that the brass guys offered, it's, it's all prepped and it's ready to go. If you're going to do this step and uniform uh, the mouth of the case to just the neck for uniform neck tension, you need to set this die up so that's all you're doing. now. One last thing, we are not done setting this die up. You want to go ahead and run your case back in to the die. This does two things. It trues the die up to the case, all right? Then you're going to run the lock ring down like that. Go ahead and grab your wrench. I like the Dillon wrench because it's designed to get right into here, you're going to snug it up just like that with the case in there. So that means it's aligned to all the cases. Every time a case goes in there, that die is aligned. The last thing you want to do is you want to make sure you have the proper depth set on your decapper right about three eighths and on a progressive press you want to make sure you have it set up sufficiently so when it pops the primer it knocks it all the way out so you don't lock the machine up okay so guys that is how you set your resize die up for uniforming neck tension from round to round to round so you have the same neck tension from load to load to load. Okay? So guys and gals, that's the end of this video. God bless. We'll see you on the next.